what a familiar sight this is. Oddly comforting in a few ways, but mostly discouraging. You notice the farmers have all their land work done. Everybody's pretty much tidied up now. Harvest is just down to the corn. Land work being chipped away at. Beehives being moved in. Cattle being moved off pasture. Getting some fall grazing done. Uh, do we have here? Holy smokes. Box of bees. Ooh. That one is fed up. This box needs to be called out. Ugh, next year, I guess. Box of bees. Look at them drip from the frames. I'm quite happy with this. Heavy as a stone. So that's good. Here's a smaller one. All these clusters just smell so good. Just that, I don't, can't even explain it, the smell of cured honey, bees, something just very unique about smelling a winter nest. Ian, we're already a half hour in almost. <laughs> mm. I'm like, man, these things go by so fast. Man. Man, it's so much fun. But I really wanted to kind of dive into the feeding a little bit, which is kind sure. of the initial uh, reason I reached out to you um, back you know what three or four weeks ago i reached out to you about possibly doing something just you and me and then i thought well let's just turn it into a full live stream at least for an hour or two tonight so um talk to us about your feeding program i guess obviously feeding is so different in other parts of the country and the world you know it's just different up there than it is down here as far as when to do it but maybe yeah. talk us through maybe some of the products you use um kind of what you're looking for just kind of what your program is because the symptoms or the signs in the colony may be somewhere in different areas, even though the actual timing of everything and depending on your goals might be a little different, but what are some of the symptoms or signs in the colony and maybe what are some of the products you use? Um, I know you've used some terms out there and I'm going to kind of let you run with this thing and, and share some, some words of wisdom with us here. Sure. Um, I'm a big believer in um, doing something for a purpose, not just doing something because it feels good. And there's a lot of feel good activities we do as beekeepers and we're not really sure if it's working or not. We're looking at other beekeepers and they're using products and you think, oh, maybe we should be using that product because that looks good when he's using that product and uh, maybe I'm in a deficit because I'm not using it. Maybe I should buy it and go use it. And there's, there's, you know, so when we try to figure this out, we need first off to know what we want to achieve from our bees. What do I want this nest to do? What do I need it to do? Um, and that's different with everybody. Everybody has different pollen flows. So maybe there's beekeepers out there. They don't have to worry about uh, supplemental feeding at all because you have it there. If you have it, why would you waste your money on supplements? But you look at a beekeeper like me up here in Miami, Manitoba, and our seasons, how should I put this? Uh, we have very four distinct seasons. Boom, 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 boom. They fall in just with an ax, just like that. The bees react to it almost instantly. And whether or not these bees kind of shift and transform themselves, uh, or they're doing it according to their cues, but they might, and they usually don't up here have the appropriate amount of feed that they need to be able to fulfill their development within those certain points of time. End of March 
to the end of April is when they develop out that spring nest. But there isn't a stitch of pollen within the uh, countryside or nectar through that entire time. Maybe just little flashes here and there, but it is a pollen and nectar dearth at that time that they're trying to transition themselves out of spring. We don't have any of that. You know, if they don't have it within their nests, if they don't have it within their bodies themselves to be able to transition the nest, they don't have the resources they need to be able to develop themselves in a very critical point of time after our honey flow. We have this massive honey flow hit us thanks to agricultural development. But as soon as the honey flow ends, we have practically absolutely nothing for these bees to feed on during a very critical time uh, within their development as they set themselves up for winter. We might have, you know, scraps here and scraps there. We just don't have the, uh, the diversity in the countryside to be able to sustain the development of these nests. So you see two very important times of development that I have pollen dearths. We need to be able to help fortify their diet. We need to be able to provide them with a little bit of stimulus and a little bit of that nutrition that maybe they could be using to help themselves get through. And we're not naive enough to think that we can replace uh, pollen itself. I mean, that's, that's what bees need. We need more of it. But maybe if we could provide the supplement to the bees during these points in time, the bulk nutrients and some of these other minerals and vitamins and such that they can utilize They'll have all that at their disposal and then they can grab little bits and pieces of that, those other nutrients that are lacking and develop out these nests. But a lot of it is balance. You know, you have the nutrients and you can provide nutrients to any animal, but without a balance of nutrients, what they need, they can't use it, utilize the nutrients, right? So we, he's been doing a lot of work on trying to provide the supplement that we want to give to these bees, but in a balanced fashion, so you know, cost effective for one thing, but also so that they can utilize it, right? If, um, is there any possible way to replace the natural elements that are in the environment as far as the pollens and the nectars coming in? Um, is there any way to really replace those? You mentioned the word supplement, and that's really what we're doing when we feed, right? If the bees are bringing in the pollen, if they're bringing in natural nectar, is that the absolute best source of food for the bees, or do you think that, that there is still a benefit to supplementing even when other stuff is coming in? I'm a big fan of Randy Oliver. He puts a lot of thought into nutrition for bees, <clears throat> and he's taken that old DeGroote uh, ratio, and he's enhanced it maybe. And whereas uh, maybe the ratio is off balance, that old ratio is off balance, because no one has ever really challenged that right from – it was created and he's finding well maybe if we focus and change things around he's finding that if we use our limiting as leucine it shows that there is a terrible amount of demand that is needed of a protein source coming into these colonies that it is extremely hard for us to achieve it providing it artificially as beekeepers it's almost impossible for me to be able to put it all together give it to them and have the bees fully utilize what they do as that natural pollen coming in, right? So I wanna be very clear that when I'm providing supplements for the bees, I'm not naive enough to think that I'm not, that I, that I can replace pollen, I can't. That's something that's mother nature, I call it, you know, the spirit of the environment around us mm. is what develops out these colonies. There's, there's all these things that we have no idea about. All I'm doing as a beekeeper is I'm just trying to complement that, right? Maybe one of those times would be in the middle of spring when they're working hand to mouth the pollen's coming in it's going straight into brood and you see a winter storm coming you know that's going to put them in immediate protein stress and they're going to pull back in that brood nest you don't want that to happen so then you you pour the coals to them you put the patties on you put the rocket fuel on top and you just get them through that week of development right i mentioned earlier about feeding supplements and how people are using products and and I use this thing I call rocket fuel. We're trying to make that sugar act more like nectar. So we're mimicking, you know, the act of that natural nectar coming into the nest. Before you get into any of that stuff, if you get into supplemental feeding, you got to take care of the basics first. That's the bulk protein they need. That's the important part right off the mark. You got to get that covered first off. Then after you figure that out, then you maybe can get a little bit fancy and start adding vitamins and minerals and other nutrients and, and fats and stuff like this. Just add on to the sides. But first off, you got to figure out when you need to feed, and then you got to provide that bulk, basic feed to them. 
And then once you figure that's working, then you can start experimenting and start baking that cake a little bit more elaborately. So um, I'm a, like I'm a big believer in doing something to achieve outcomes and trying to, you know, make purpose for everything we're doing, right? And using these supplements, we're using the supplements for a purpose. So just don't use them blindly. You just buy something from the internet, throw it into your syrup and feed it to your colonies and expect your colonies just to erupt in growth. Mm -hmm. No. It doesn't work like that. You got to be targeting. You got to be using that for a purpose to target something very specific to be able to accelerate or, or manipulate that behavior to allow that growth. It's very, very important.